life that's going to change the way you see life, change the way you do life. Hallelujah, Jesus is going to change the way that, 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 that you see the scope of how it is that you're going to come out. I don't want you to be distracted by the left or what's to your right, but God, we give you glory on today, God. We lift up your name, God. And so even now, God, we come against every thought that exalts itself against the knowledge and the power of God. We cast it down, God. We say that it has no power in this place, that you will allow us to focus in on what it is that we need to focus on, God, that we can engage the service, God, that we're not ashamed of who we're singing about. We're not ashamed of who it is that we're clapping and we're praising to, oh, God. We're not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, but, God, we can go forth, oh, God, and, and, and know that you're receiving our praise, that you're receiving our worship. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah, Jesus, man, that you're receiving us on today. We need you, oh God, to come into this place, oh God, and take control, God, of every heart and every mind, God. Take control, God, of everything and every situation, oh God, then, and you magnify yourself, God. For the name of the Lord is great, and he's greatly to be praised. And we lift you up, God. We magnify you on today, God. We honor you in this place, oh God. So we say, God, give us the power to sing, God. Give us the power to preach on today, God. Give us the power, God, to minister as unto the Lord, oh God. God. And as you receive it, God, you increase it. You multiply it, God. You get the glory out of our lives. You get the glory out of every selection, God. You get the glory out of every word that's spoken. And sing your healing virtue in this room, God. Somebody may be hurting from something that they're going through, God. But we say, send your healing power. Hallelujah, Jesus. Somebody may be going through some stuff in their mind. We say, heal their hurt. Heal their emotions, God. Heal them everywhere that they hurt in the mighty matchless name of Jesus. Send deliverance in this house, God. Oh, God, I know seeds have been planted. Things have been said. They've been called everything but a child of God. But, Lord, let them understand what your word says about them. Let your word begin to penetrate their hearts, penetrate their minds, God, that you may be able to deliver and send forth breakthrough like never before. And by the time it's all said and done, let somebody come to this altar saying, what must I do to be saved? And so we thank you in advance for salvation. We thank you in advance for the gift of salvation, God. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And we thank you for those that are accept you as their Lord and Savior, that eternal life may be their portion, O oh God. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, we give you glory on today. We clap our hands in this house. Come on, everybody. Just clap your hands for Jesus. He's been more than good. He deserves the glory. He deserves all the praise. He deserves the honor. Come on, clap him like you just won a million dollars. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Clap him like you just won the lottery. Hallelujah, Jesus. Clap him like somebody just gave you the best gift you wanted for your birthday. We thank you, God, that we celebrate you on today. Oh, God, because you keep on doing great things for us. You've kept our parents and you've kept even us, God, from the school shootings and things of that nature. Nature, God. We thank you, God, for the hedge of protection, God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that there's been an ark of safety around us, oh God, because of the prayers that's been prayed over us. And so we thank you, God, as we pray, even now, Jesus, oh God, that you're able to come in, oh God, uh, and show yourself mighty and strong, oh God. And you shall not be defeated, for we speak victory, and we shall see victory from this time forth. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, we pray. All the people of God say, Thank God. I said all the people of God say thank God. Amen and amen. We're getting ready to go forth in worship. Come on. We're ready to go forth in worship. And, and, and I want y'all to join in. If you feel like clapping your hands, clap. If you feel like jumping, jump, whatever it is. But make sure you get in on the worship.
come chasing after you No matter what I have to do Cause I need you more and more 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 I'm chasing after you Praising my way through Just to be closer to you I'm chasing after you I'm chasing after you I'm praying I'm gonna praise my way through you more and more more and more more and more 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 and more, more and more, more and more. You are my strength, strength like no other, strength like no Reaches to me. You are, you are my strength, strength like no other. Strength like no other. Keep playing, y'all. More and more. Come on, y'all. Say that with me, y'all. Come on. Say it. More and more. If you got a voice, say it again. Say it. You say it. Come on, y'all. Tell them I need some more. That's more and more. Say it. I need to know a little bit more about God. Don't you need to know? Say it. Oh, I need a little bit more of your strength, you say. Oh, I need a little bit more of your power, you say. Oh, I need a little bit more of your joy, you say. Now clap your hands just like this. Come on, y'all, clap, 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 clap. Now rock with me. Come on, y'all. Now rock with me. 
lean with it. Now rock with me and lean with it. Come on. Now rock with me and lean with it. Now rock with me. Y'all ain't leaning. Now rock with me. Now lean, lean, real. Now rock with me. Now double clap just like this. That's how we praise God. And if you can't lean, you can just bounce like this. People who don't know how to rock, they just bounce, y'all. We call that the two-step. Come on, everybody double clap like y'all to be my choir tonight, okay? Y'all ready? Say, we want more. 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 That's it, girl. We want more. Come on, Bray. We want more. What do we want? Say Jesus, 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 Jesus. Come on, y'all. We want more. We want more. We want more. We want more. We're going to clap again. Come on, y'all. Everybody clap like this. That sound real nice. And every time you clap, you got to understand that's like punching your enemy in the face. So think about all your enemies. Come on, y'all. Everybody clap like this. I'm punching my enemy right now. Come on, y'all. Here we go again. Y'all say, say, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Now everybody clap like We want some more of him I need some power I need some strength y'all One more time Can you help me say Say Jesus 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 One more time and everybody clap calling on. Say it again. Say Jesus. It's just slowing down and thinking. That's all you're doing. Come on. Say Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Say it again. Say Jesus. One more time. Say that name. Say Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Last time, y'all say it. Say Jesus. So before we take our seats, we're going to think about one thing that God has done. So you take your seats. I feel y'all. Yeah, we're going to call up one name. That's okay. Everybody say Jesus. Say Jesus. Say Jesus. Because we need him to help us. Say Jesus. Say it, Jesus. Come on, y'all help him. Say Jesus. Jesus changes everything. Jesus. Come on, say Jesus. That's what the old mothers do when they don't know how to pray and they don't know what to say and you want them to stop. You want to say, oh, my God. Just say, Jesus. And you don't call it in vain like, Jesus, God. No, you're just going to be like, Jesus. Because if you call his name, you don't even have to put nothing to it. He already knows what you're talking about. So in times that you're getting in trouble, in times something happened, if you just say, Jesus, and really mean it, he's going to answer just like when you say mama or daddy or grandma or whatever you call, if you just say his name, 
everything you need, all of your questions, all of your concerns, all of your burdens, when you say that name, he immediately show up like, what you want, Red? What you need? Yeah. What's going on? What you need? What's happening? Because you called him. All you got to say, Jesus. Y'all ready to say it? On the count of three. One, two, three. That's it. Y'all ready? One more time. And then take your seat. One, two, three. There you go. Take your seats, y'all. Take your seats. It's simple. She said, what? I called him. That's what we want you to do. We want you to say it loud. Every time you say his name, understand that there's power in the name of Jesus. And the Bible tells us that every knee bows at the name of Jesus. Everybody know what take a bow means? What is that? That's like, uh, what's the dude's name that took the knee? What's the Kaepernick, right? So all your situations, your troubles, the things that's bothering you, your enemies, when you call on the name of Jesus, they got to take a bow. They got to stop what they're doing and bow down. At the name of what? So when you can't think of anything else to say, if you don't know how to pray, if you don't know how to pray like Pastor Obi, if you don't know how to pray like me, if you call on that name, Jesus, every prayer and every need and every concern, it's all balled up when you call on that name. He already knows what you're talking about. He knows what you're crying about. He knows what happened. You say, well, how come he ain't do nothing about it? Sometimes he's just waiting for you to call him. He's waiting for you to utilize his name, to say his name. And if you try it, that's how you're going to know it. You may not go off of my words, but if you try it during the week, when you go back to school, y'all don't want to break. Who don't want to break? Raise your hand. That's it. I wish they would give me winter break at work. My kid, a whole week off just because it's winter. I would love that. Did y'all? <laughs> yes, I would love that too. How many of y'all had a couple days off? All right, so you headed back into school or you already went back into school, and we just want to give you a few things before you do it. So the name of Jesus is one of those names that people fear. They don't want the name Jesus. They're trying to take it off our money in God we trust, but specifically the name Jesus. They want it out the schools. They don't really want you to pray in school because they understand that when you introduce that name to any situation, it's like saying, God, you're welcome here. So more than often, as, as much as you can, mention the name in everything you do. Ask your friends. We had a great Bible study with our young people, and we asked them about their friendships, who they're connected to, and, and what their friends like, and what their friends are involved in. If your friends go to the mall, if they go to Somerset, and your friend decides to go to the dressing room and come out, uh, they go on with three shirts and only come out with two, then what happened? They stole something. Your friends rock like that? Are you in agreement with friends that kind of, you know, if it's a kid that don't got much, maybe they ain't got, you know, the freshest days, they ain't got the freshest ones, and then that kid is being talked about, are you the friend that's going to laugh because your other friends are? What kind of friendships and agreements you have? Are your friends intimidated or really embarrassed by the name? You got to check your friendships. Are you scared to ask your friend about, we talked about that in our youth Bible study. Like, if you rock with Jesus, your friends should be rocking with Jesus. And if they ain't rocking with Jesus, you need to check your friend circle. Check your agreements. That's what we mean by agreement. When you say you agree with something, so you may say, well, I don't agree with stealing. But if your friends steal, guess what? You agree with it. What's the scripture? Amos 3 and 3. I know somebody who was in that Bible study. Real, you know it. I'm going to put one of y'all. Amos 3 and 3, what it say? Anybody. They got their mask on. Y'all got to remember the words. How can two walk together? They like, hmm. They done went to the mall. They done ate the pizza. We done play Uno. But you got to remember the words. What you got? I like that. How can they walk to, together with or without agree, except they agree? That means you got to be in agreement. The person that you're walking together with, friendships, relationships, yo boo. Y'all got boo? Y'all want to talk. Y'all got boo? She got a married boo. You agree with your boo? Your boo may want to go to that next level, and you may not be willing to. Your boyfriend, girlfriend, what y'all call them? Y'all call them boos? 
I don't got one. Listen, because you're sitting next to your grandma. If you say you got one, she might do something. But agreements are important. So we've been talking about relationships all week long, all month long. We've been talking about relationships. And I want to talk about the last ship. I want to talk about the last ship, actually the last two ships, which is relationships, um, which is leadership and mentorship. I want to talk about mentorship and leadership. So I know a lot of y'all, we discussed yesterday um, about mentorship. A lot of y'all have goals on what you want to be, what you aspire to be like, what you aspire to look like, how you aspire whether, aspire whether you're an athlete, you want to have a certain body, you want to have certain goals, whether you aspire to be a policeman one day or a fireman one day. What do you desire to be? Anybody know? Call it out. What you want to be? This is an interactive service. This ain't no quiet youth group service where I'm going to preach at you. I'm going to interact with you. What you want to be? NFL player, athlete. What you want to be? NBA athlete. That's a whole lot of athletes. You must be doing them push-ups. So what you want to be? What you want to be? What you want to be? So all these athletes, are these your friends real? Cousins. They all agree. You, don't, you notice they got the same goals? Ain't that crazy? They agree. They all got the same likings. That's why they hang with each other. That's why if you hang around with a Tatiana, everybody going to think you're a Tatiana. Y'all know what Tatiana is? Ratchet, nasty. Mm, okay, anyway. What you want to be? A rock star. Yes. What you want to be? Black-owned business. She wants to be an entrepreneur. But, okay, I, I'm just saying, do you know what you want to be? A doctor. Drew says she wants to be a doctor. Okay? Shauna, what you want to be? Anesthesiologists, they make great money. Trust me, I got a bill after I have great insurance, and they sent me money because they get paid by the minute. And you only get 15 minutes, and then anything over that, they send you a very large bill. What you want to be? Mm-hmm. You want to think on it? What you want to be? OBGYN, they make all the money they make, all of it. They get all the coins. What you want to be? A judge? Yes, yes. Those are incredible goals. Everybody say goals. It's what you aspire to be. And in your pursuit, do you know anybody that's an OBGYN? You know an NFL player? You know a great athlete? You know an actress? You? What was your goal? Entrepreneur. Somebody that's an entrepreneur? You? You know an anesthesiologist? Got him. God bless him. Your goals, your mentorships. At this age, you got to be around people that have the same focus, the same mindset, or are headed in the same direction to you, but you also need to connect to people that can help guide you along the way. Everybody say mentor. A lot of times what we live in is a world that's trying to kick Jesus out of the whole system. So we have like uh, centers, we have programs, we have all types of things that allow you guys to be motivated and inspired. But if you leave out Jesus in your goals, you're not going to reach the purpose that God has called you to be. Leaving out Jesus, because nobody wants to include Jesus. Trust me, they told me and Brother Obi, yeah, you can come in, but you can't mention the name Jesus. So we, you, you're you going to let us interact with the youth, but we just can't mention the name. You got to be careful. Got to be careful who your mentors are. Now, who is your mentor? Anybody got mentors in here? We asked our young people yesterday. Our mentors, who's your mentor? Your older cousins and your dad. Who's your mentor? Your mom. I love that. Who's your mentor? Y'all speak up. Say it loud so I can hear you. Who's your mentor? That's a good, that's a truthful answer. You got a mentor? Who's your mentor? Your dad. Mentors. Mentor is somebody that you trust that can advise you or lead you or help you along the way. So somebody that you trust that can advise you, teach you, or lead you along the way. And the truth of the matter is, I got a mentor. I got a couple. 
because I have goals that I'm still setting out to do. I've had them since I was your age. I had them since I was little. People that were able to help me along the way and mentor me. Mentorships are vital, not just for young people, but for older people too. It's vital. And leadership, that's like a cuss word right now because nobody wants to be led. Nobody, when people think of leadership, they think, tell me what to do. You're going to tell me what to do. You're going to lead me. A leader just leads people. They lead a group of people to where they should go. So everybody at this point, right, how old are you, young man that's here? How old are you? Ten? You got any little cousins that's five and six? How many of y'all got little cousins, little sisters, little brothers? He's one of them. Usually your cousins, they just by default, you get to mentee them. They just by default because they're around you. Everybody should be having a mentor, somebody that they're looking up to, but you should also be always willing to teach somebody that's behind you. I told our young people yesterday, I said, listen, if you're 16, then you should definitely have somebody that's 9 that you're able to share with. If you're 9, then you should definitely be having somebody that's like 5 that you play with or share some type of interaction so that every generation can look be back behind the other person and pull the other person up, encourage the other person, inspire the other person. Well, at your age, you 11, there's little leagues, some little tots that you can be like, you know what, I'm going to coach you, I'm going to help you so that when you get my age, you better. Things that you wish somebody would have taught you when you were much little or maybe it's like me. I'm going to tell my story and then I'm going to go into the message, okay? In this day where the name Jesus, everybody say the name, is being left out of the equation. Y'all know what the equation, right, is? One plus one equals. That's the equation. They don't want to include Jesus, the creator of all things, in nothing. They want to leave him out and just inspire everybody, motivate everybody. God, oh, life is wonderful. Life is great, and you can do it too. But the only way you're going to make it in this world where men are lovers of themselves, they haughty, in your school, they vaping, challenges to smoke weed, challenges to go and skip school, challenges to not do your work, challenges to not pursue your goal as an athlete, challenges to not pursue your goal as an actress. In this day and age, in this community, girls have babies as young as 14, 15. I don't need to be inspired. I need the name. Because that's the name that's going to destroy the thing that's working against my goal. It's great to say, well, poverty is working against your goal. A goal, miseducation, maybe you don't have the proper tools necessary for life. But at the end of the day, you need to know there's something behind that thing that's working beyond not having education. Because there's a thing called the spirit realm. And the only thing that that spirit realm obey is the name. So you can coach me all day. You can help me all day. You can even encourage me. But if you ain't bringing no Jesus... I don't know if you got the ability to mentor me. Now, you can pull, I can pull nuggets out of you. I like what Terrell said. He said that he looks at, um, what's the athlete's name that you like? Odell. Because he has certain disciplines about himself. So me, I can pull on anybody. I can find something in anybody, and, and that inspires me. I can find something in Oprah Winfrey and be like, wow, she made it. She ain't got to be preaching. She ain't got to be speaking in tongues. But I can look at things in her life, right? What actress do you look at? What's your favorite actress? It's okay. You can look at her and say there's something about her that you like. But I'm here as the church, right? We talked about that. I represent the church. The church is not the building because if that's the case, we're really not in a church. The church is not a building. We are the church. And what they're trying to do nowadays is leave out the aspect of God, Jesus, and the church out your world. And we're just not going to let that happen. The people that lead you, mentor you, whatever they're doing in your world that's going to guide you and impact you, they can't leave out the name. So for me, let me tell my story, and then we're going to go to 2 Kings, okay? 2 Kings chapter 19. If you got your Bible app, I want you to turn there while I'm starting to share. Your Bible app, y'all know what the Bible app is? If you don't have the Bible app, who got a phone? Who has phones? Y'all and y'all, I know your phone is dead because you was on social media. 
You was texting? Okay. Her phone was dead, too. She said, Mom, I'm three percent. Okay, find your Bible app. We're going to 2 Kings chapter 19. Let me tell my story about my mentors, and then we're going to go into this, and I promise you I'm not going to be too long. Y'all enjoying it? Y'all getting something out of it? I'm going to follow. You better follow me along, because if I ask you a question and you don't know, that means you fell asleep. Be like, not me. Okay, so listen. Listen, I grew up in a home that was, at first, my parents were married, and uh, at five, my parents divorced. So then I became the prodigy of divorce. I was the result of divorce. They divorced when I was five years old, so I lived half of my life with my father, half of my life with my mother. But at five, I knew what it was like to be raised in a single-parent home. Single-parent home. I lived half of my life with my mom, and she had enough sense for all my parents out there on social media, don't leave Jesus out the equation in raising your children. My mom and my dad both had enough sense to make sure that they taught me the importance of the name Jesus and the importance of church. They understood that things were going to happen in my world, and without Jesus, I was going to be defeated. So as a single mom and a single father, they, they make sure both homes that they introduce me to the church. This is a day because of pandemic, people don't want to gather. They feel like they can do anything they want to do. They don't really feel church is necessary. But I don't want y'all to think that way. I want y'all to remember the importance of the name. Can't leave him out. Can't leave church out. Everybody said, well, everybody realized that church ain't really that important now. Yes, it is. Everything I got is because they equipped me in the building. They couldn't do this stuff virtually. When I moved with my mom, we struggled. We moved from Mount Clemens to the east side of Detroit. Connor Grasher, straight up ratchet and east side. Connor and Grasher from Mount Clemens to the east side of Detroit. And my mom was doing everything she knew with five kids. It was the church, a pastor by the name of Fred Mitchell. My mom was struggling, had a good job, but it's hard when it's just one person. And Fred Mitchell was the pastor of Rock of Ages. He knew that my mom was struggling. So for all you single mamas and all out there, you better find a solid man of God. Not one that's trying to sneak and flirt with you and you know be all. That ain't it. Fred, Reverend Fred Mitchell was the man of God. Like here Pastor Obi is. Solid man of God. He would bring my mom food. He wouldn't come in. He'd be like, I just left you some food on the, on the, on the porch. You ain't got to do nothing with him. Just letting you know. My mama never was the person that said I need. But the church filled in where we didn't have. And then that pastor, because I had brothers, became a mentor to my, uh, to my brothers. He was able to teach them. He was able to give them nuggets. You can't get that stuff virtually. He was able to minister to, to them one-on-one. -on -one. He saw that my one brother had a, a gift in playing, so he helped him. He let him get on the organ. He saw that my other brother was gifted in speaking, so he did different things with us because he saw something in us. And I want to encourage everybody out there who are attending a church. You have youth leaders that don't have the ability to see the gifts on the inside of kids. You got the wrong youth leader. You need a youth leader that's able to say, I see a missionary in this girl. I see a prophet in that young man. And able to groom that gift without wanting nothing. So Fred Mitchell, and then there was a, a Elder Andrews for, from Walker Memorial. He would come and pick us up because he understood my mama was working. It was the church that helped us and mentored us along and was our leaders to help us. And they did it. I have Perfect examples of people that did it, and they want nothing back. You know, sometimes when people do stuff for you, they want something. You know, you're going to have to do this for me. If I'm doing this for you, then you're going to have to stay here. They knew. They didn't care whether we were there for members for a long time or a little bit of time. They understood their assignment. Say they understood their assignment. A mentor or a leader is always going to understand their assignment, and their assignment is to push the purpose of God in you. That's the assignment, to push the purpose of God in you. A mentor should always be about pushing the purpose of God in you. That's what it's about. Okay? So I had them men, them solid men, but then I moved with my dad, right? I was 10 years old. Anybody in here 10? 11, around that age. So what grade are you in? Yeah? Sixth grade. So I was in the fifth grade. Young lady, move in with my dad, right? My dad and my two brothers. So it's just me, the only girl with three dudes. I 
I'm 10, I really don't know, and Sister Cindy here is my witness, I really don't know a whole lot about being a female. My hair growing, and I'm just with my dad. I'm trying to put gel on it. I'm flat ironing. I'm putting perms in it. But I had people around me, everybody say in the church, that was willing to mentor me and pour into me even at the age of 10. So I had the Cindy's that would come along and do my hair. I had the Nana's who's in the kitchen right now. She would be like, hmm. And she would straighten my hair and put in them real tight curls that nothing but Jesus was going to be able to loosen. And she had girls. So she knew I needed to be around girls. So she put me around her girls. And then I had people in my world um, like a Judy Kazee. They were all in the church. And they poured into me, showed me how to cook, showed me how to clean. Because my father, he was all right, but... He couldn't teach me those things. Then I had a Marie Harris, and she taught me, you know, this is what you wear underneath your garment. She taught me how to wear the proper bra because my home was lacking something that my father could not provide. And the church stood in the gap for me and mentored me along the way. Don't leave Jesus out the equation. I'm coming around to it. So then I had other people in my world, like a Lois Gordon. She was over a lot of community stuff, right? So she knew that I had a gift of singing on the inside of me. So at the age of 10, she would take me to different community events and allow me to sing. She would show me etiquette and how I'm supposed to behave myself, how I'm supposed to stand, what I'm supposed to say. And I was willing because a mentee has to be willing to listen and learn from the mentor. She taught me these things along the way. I wouldn't be the person that I am today if I didn't have a mentor. Everybody say mentorship. I wouldn't be that person, and I need the church to understand that they have to have the ability to pour into the next generation. The church is what stands in the gap for every need in the home. We show you how to go and be in God's purpose. So then I had people else, other people. I just showed you all some other little things, but I had other people in my world. They taught me how to pray. I'm talking, but I'm telling y'all we're going to the word for this morning. How many of y'all in here know how to pray? You can raise, it's okay, don't be ashamed, it's us, it's grown folks who don't know how to pray. Raise your hand if you know how to pray. Okay. I didn't know how to pray. I saw my mom pray, but I wasn't living with my mom. So there were other people in my world like a Curtis Hall. She was in the church, right? And she would pray and have to pick me up because I had to cheerlead, but my dad well, wouldn't let me go to cheerleading practice unless I went to Bible studies and shut in. So I had to go. Parents, hear that point. You cannot continue to pour activities into your children and not train them how to fight. And I ain't talking about boxing. You understand that life going to hit you hard. You better train your child how to fight. So Mother Hall taught me how to fight in the spirit. She taught me how to pray. So I would go and pray with her. We have services, and I would pray right beside her. And sometimes I wouldn't know what I was praying. Sometimes when I would hear my mom praying, I'd get right beside her and I'd be like, Jesus, I'm in the name of Jesus. I'm in the name. And I'd go put some tears on my eyes so I would know how to cry too. Because she would cry when she prayed. But I needed somebody that would stand beside me so that I would know how to do those things. Everybody say mentorship. Yeah, it's important. So we're going to 2 Kings. Come with me, 2 Kings chapter 19. It was very important that I learned. I'm sorry, 1 Kings chapter 19. 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 16. 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 16. Next time we gather, I want y'all to have the Bible app on your phone. Download that bad boy. It only take a quick second. Download the Bible app. It's important that you guys understand, one, the importance of a mentor. Two, the relationship between a mentor and a mentee. And then being intentional to make sure that you have one. And I'm not talking about somebody that just encourage you. You're doing a great job today, Billy. That ain't enough. You're going to have some demons. You're going to have some spirits. You're going to have some folks that's going to come against you. And you're going to need to know how to pray. Why do you need to know how to pray? I'm asking. This is an interactive youth Bible study, youth, youth Saturday service. Why do you need to know how to pray? It's a weapon. To get closer to God, that's how you become closer to God. Prayer is a weapon. Prayer is a vehicle. Say prayer is a weapon. Prayer is a vehicle. He said to get closer to God, that's your vehicle to get closer to God. 
Prayer is a vehicle to get closer to God, but it's a weapon against, who do you need a, a, a weapon against? The enemy. Who said that? You did, Dre? <laughs> you? One of y'all said it. It's a weapon against your enemy. So you need to understand your assignment. I'm talking to two parts here. So as a mentee, that's your mentee. That's who you guys are. But then you also need mentors. So to all of my mentors, you have to have the ability to spot people. Spot people that need. Some of y'all say, well, I'm trying to look for a mentor. I'm trying to get mentored myself. No, you got something that you can pour back into somebody else. You got to be able to spot. So the perfect mentor and mentorship in the word of God is Elijah and Elisha. I know one of y'all going to remember this. Both of them ran because they understand I'm going to ask them. Well, they left you here by yourself. He said, oh, my God. Which one? Because Brother Obi talked about this yesterday in our youth Bible study. Who is the mentor and who is the mentee? Elijah and Elisha. Yes. Elijah is the mentor. Elisha is the mentee. So here we have Elijah, who's the older prophet, right? Elijah's the older prophet, and Elisha is the mentee. And so there was a problem that came along. I need y'all to follow along with me. And Elijah, the Jah, the older Elijah, was afraid. He ran from this chick called Jezebel. She was chasing him. He ran. She was killing all the prophets. And Elijah had a huge problem. And in his problem, he was told to go into the mountain, go and seek the Lord, and get in the presence of God. And God gave him some answers. And one of his answers was in 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 16. You are to anoint Jehu, son of Nimeshai, as king over Israel, and Elisha, son of Shaphat, from Abel Maloha, as prophet in your place. I know those were some big words, but it's okay. He basically told him, I want you to go and anoint Elisha. And when he says anoint, I want you to give him what's on you. He's going to be the prophet. He's going to be the next person that comes behind you. So if you're an actress, then you're going to go and pour into somebody else that's going to be an actress that's younger than you. If you're an NFL player, then you are going to teach and train the next NFL player that's going to replace you, right? If you're a doctor, then that means you're going to go and touch and pour into the next person that's going to be a doctor after you. Whatever you're called to do, but let's say you're a prayer warrior, then that means you got to anoint and pour into the next prayer warrior that you're supposed to pour into. Let's say you're a prophet. You speak what thus saith the Lord. That means you got to go and pour into the next person. So that's the instructions that God gave him. And then in verse 19, it says, Elijah left there and found Elisha, son of Shaphat, as he was plowing. So this is important because you got to be working. Everybody say work. You got to do some work. And not just work. We're talking about the work of the Lord. Everybody say the work of the Lord. So he found Elisha working. I mean, you can't be lazy. It's going to take some work. Y'all know what work is? Y'all know what work is? How do you put in work for church? Y'all was like, oh, Lord, is she going there? How do you put in work? How do you be found working at church? Anybody want to answer? Reading your Bible. She said, yep. Drew said, read your Bible. Say, put in work. That's what that means. Reading your Bible is putting in work. Everybody say, put in some work. How you going to put in the work? Let me see here. This is where I got this from. This your Bible? You going to read your Bible. Say, put in the work. You can't be a mentee that's not willing to work. I had mentees like that. To all my mentors out there that's just pouring everywhere, you got to make sure you pour intentionally. I was just pouring because I wanted to help any and everybody. I wanted people to have the experience that I had. So I started pouring everywhere. Anybody that needed help, I just started helping. But everybody didn't want to put in the work. Say, put in the work. And instead, Brie, I became like a garbage can or like a Catholic priest. They wanted to tell me everything that was going on in their world, and this is what happened. And then I slept with this person. He ain't mean me no good, and I went and slept with somebody else, and they ain't mean me no good either. 
Well, stop sleeping with people. They want to put in the, I'm being real. Y'all understand this. They put in the work. I can't stop. You know, I told a lie and I got in trouble. And so I said I wasn't going to do that again. But then I lied again. I just want to come talk to you about it. <laughs> well, stop lying. You got to do something. There's always work when it involves a mentor and a mentee. Everybody say put in the work. So I need you guys to begin to put in the work towards the things that matter. Because remember, what are they trying to leave out of everything? So if you're putting in how many hours a week for football, think about it. How many hours do you put in for football? Two hours a week? So you're just gifted. You're naturally gifted. He said, uh-huh. Most times, really, Brother Opie got that testimony. He said he really didn't practice. He was just gifted at a lot of stuff. A lot of his, his cousins and stuff, they super taller than him. And they're um, athletes in, in, in the NBA and NFL because they're naturally gifted. Grace is a naturally brilliant person. She don't got to study to get all A's. She just get them. You do study sometimes. But most times she just do it because she's naturally gifted to be that way. But you got to put in some work. If you want to know how to read your Bible, say put in the work. Do y'all want to know how to read your Bible? Is reading the word hard? I hear y'all. Y'all, we going online today. I'm telling y'all, We talk. I know some of y'all out there hear me. You got to put in the work. That means you're going to have to spend intentional time in your, say it loud. Put in the work. If you want to grow in God's word, you got to put in the work. So verse 20, it says, Elisha left the oxen, ran to follow Elijah, and said, please let me kiss my father and mother, then I will follow you. Somebody say follow. And then somebody say leave. Some of you guys have to understand that you got to leave some stuff behind in order to follow what God is telling you to do. Now, Rel, I'm going to use you a lot tonight because you're sitting in front of me. But, oh. Pooh, Shauna, Madison, Drew, if them people, if your friends not rocking with you and going in the same direction you're going, you're going to have to tell them, I've gotten a word or I received instruction that I'm trying to do something different, so i got to leave y'all behind. And these were his close folks. This was his mother and father. Some of us, even out there in social media, are connected to people, and because you've been following and rolling with them for this long, it's hard for you to separate and leave. But in order to go for purpose, you got to leave those folks behind. And Elisha had purpose on the inside of him. Elijah was a great man. He was a great prophet. But God called Elisha to do double, even greater what Elijah did. And he had to leave what he was in. He had to leave and everybody say follow. It's important that you follow. What you want to do? I want to be an NFL, NFL player. What you want? I want to grow in God's word. Just like you got natural goals, you got to have some spiritual goals about yourself. And you got to put in the work for it. You got to be willing to follow and you got to be willing to leave your ordinary. Sometimes people get real comfortable with the things of God. So if you come from church, you get real comfortable not praying because you don't got no prayer life. If you come from church, you can get real comfortable not reading because you don't like to read your word. No, you don't like to read. So reading your word going to take some effort. But you got to be willing to put in the work. You got to be willing to follow. You got to be willing to leave some things behind. For your friends that don't understand, you got to just say bye. I don't want to say bye. Oh, it's tight up in here. What about your co-workers? What about some of y'all, if y'all want to be entrepreneurs, you got to leave your job behind. That's going to be kind of difficult. Y'all like, oh, yeah, okay. This last thing, you got to be down. You got to be willing to ride or die. Everybody say ride or die. Okay, listen. So Elijah, that's the, that's the, that's the mentor and the mentee. This is a relationship, right? I'm pouring into you, Kendra, and you pouring back to me. Upside down or flip side out or perverted or defiled mentorships, you constantly give it, and they ain't able to give you nothing back. But you got to be able to rock with me, and I got to be able to rock with you. I got to be able to see your goals and support you in your goals, and there's going to come a point where you pour back into me. There's going to be a point where you're giving back to me. There's going to be a point where you're pushing me as well. I'm going to push you until I can't push you no more. But there's going to come a point, real. you're going to, like, you encouraged me yesterday. You pour it back into me. 
just through your interaction and your 32 cards in Uno. <laughs> you came back. You came back. Okay, so you got to be able to pour back into me as well. All right? Mentor and mentee. So here we go. We're going to um, chapter 2. It says, the time had come from the Lord. I'm going to read a little bit so y'all come along with me, okay? Come along and follow along with me. The time had come for the Lord to take Elijah. So Elijah has come to his end, right? Up to heaven in a whirlwind. Elijah and Elisha were traveling from Gilgal. And Elijah said to Elisha, stay here. The Lord is sending me to Bethel. But Elisha replied, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. Then the sons of the prophets who were at Bethel came to Elisha and said, do you know that the Lord will take your master away from you today? He said, yeah, I know. Be quiet. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here. The Lord is sending me to Jericho. But Elisha said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went to Jericho. Then the sons of the prophets who were in Jericho came to Elisha and said, do you know that the Lord will take your master? They asked him that. And they was afraid. It was some of them that weren't willing to go. They understood that something was about to happen to Elijah. And only one person out of all those prophets, because Elijah just didn't have Elisha. He had a whole slew of other mentees. But Elisha was the one that was willing to ride or die. He was the one that was willing to rock with Elijah no matter what because he understood the assignment. He understood that I'm going to rock so close until I get what I need. You got to be able to, one, identify your mentor, and you got to be willing to rock with that person until you get what you need. You got to be able to rock so close. When I tell y'all, people wonder why I pray the way I pray. I rock with, with Mother Curtis Hall. She would pray, and she start tapping her foot. I would just be tapping my foot. I didn't even know why. I just wanted to be like her. So I would tap my foot, too. And then somebody told me I thought she was tapping her foot when she would pray like that. I thought she was tapping her foot because she was really feeling the Holy Ghost. She ended up telling one of the other young ladies, no, nah, that would keep me up. Because sometimes when she would pray, she'd get tired and fall asleep. But I was willing to pray until I knew the language of prayer. There was a Pat Lewis Johnson, and she knew. Y'all wonder where I get basking from? She was basking a long time ago, and people thought she was the weirdest person. Because she would just sit on the altar and lay on the altar, literally lay on the altar. we come in for church, and she'd be there an hour early just laying on the altar. She would have us laying there, and she'd be singing songs and different things like that. I learned different things in the church. I found that. I'm going to go to one more thing, and I'm going to wrap this up. It was the church, y'all, that the reason why you see me standing here is because I had Elijahs that were willing to pour into me. But sometimes you might find people that's willing to give something to you, but they want something from you because they understand that you're just that person that's prosperous. So I want to give that warning as well. You'll have people that say, yeah, come along with me because I see that you got, girl, you got money just always coming to you. So I'm going to always walk for Brie. I'm going to rock with Brie because Brie going to always have something good going. Brie always got something going on. Oh, I'm going to rock with her because she always, she always got the hookup. Some people will connect with you based upon what you have. So God shows us in his word in Genesis, I believe it's Genesis chapter 29. It's a story about Jacob and Laban, and I want y'all to go there later. It's a story about Jacob. I want y'all to read your word, put in the work. It's a story about Jacob and Laban. And this story is where Jacob wanted something from Laban, right? He wasn't his mentor, but he had something that he needed, which was his daughter. He wanted Rachel. So they had an agreement. And sometimes in your agreements, you serve your time, and then they want some more from you, so they're going to be like, can you just keep serving or can you just keep doing or can you just keep giving me? And it was time for him to separate from Laban, but he didn't want that. You got to understand when you're supposed to connect to somebody, it's not going to be perverted. They ain't going to keep asking you and you not get, you ain't just going to see them. Bless. Laban was all about legacy. Jacob was about purpose. Jacob was the one that was going to produce the tribes, the 12 tribes. And Laban was just trying to build up his house. 
You got folks that will sow into you so they can build up their house, build up their name, build up their business, build up who they are. But they ain't about kingdom purpose. They about building themselves. So you got to be careful who you connect to. The church is a safe house. It's supposed to be a place of safety. These are the people that are going to help you and push you not to be the best, you know, teacher, the actor, but the best Per, the person who God has created you to be. The church. And everybody keep kicking him out, but we're going to keep declaring the name. Come on, Mike, come on. We're going to keep declaring the name. We're going to keep declaring the name. Y'all stand to y'all feet. Know who your mentors are. No, I want y'all to identify. I want y'all to identify, identify people that you know can mentor godly, everybody say godly, mentors, mentorship, somebody that's going to help you with your prayer life. What is prayer? I said two things that prayer is. What is it? A weapon and what? Who said it? A weapon and what else? A vehicle. Prayer is a weapon and a vehicle. You need to know how to pray, young people. My people out there, if y'all out there and you're leaders and your young people don't know how to lead people to Christ, you need to know how to disciple. How do I bring somebody to Christ? How do I bring somebody to church? How do I ask somebody, do they know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior? What does that look like? Other thing you need is Jesus. You need the power. You need the power. You don't just need to know how to pray, but you need the power of the Holy Ghost. You need the power of the Holy Ghost. You need to know how to read your word and understand your word. I love Sister Shanice back there. She said, I need some translations. I need to know which Bible version. I need to know. I don't, that's stuff that you need. You need to know. She's like, did she just say my name? She over here, y'all. Let me see. You need to know the word. You need to know how to pray. Who's going to show you that? Can your friend show you how to pray? Do you feel embarrassed when it says you need to know how to pray? If something happened at your school, your teacher fall out on the ground, we want you to know how to call 911, but what should you know how to do? Pray. Something happened in your family, a family member gets sick, something going on in your world, you need to know how to do what? You need to get beside people, godly people. I'm encouraging you all out there on social media. Y'all need to be connected with people, mentorships, leaderships that are pouring into you, that are pouring into your young people, that will teach them without any ulterior motive how to pray and how to seek the Lord. We can't forsake this gathering together. If he didn't invite you, would you come to church? Well, you got to go to church because your parents go to church. How many of y'all parents go to church? Raise your hand. Gracie, you don't count. You got to come. You're old. She's like, man. We got to gather like this, you guys. But you got to know why you're gathering. You're not just coming to come. You're not just coming just to be here. You don't want to just say, well, I got dressed up. You look cute, girl. I like your outfit. Your shoulders look nice. You look cute. But you got to get something from this. You ain't come here to waste your time. You came here to know. Say it louder. What would happen if Beyonce walked up in here? I said, oh, my God, Beyonce, my name is Jesus. We need y'all to know that name. And we need you to know somebody else, if somebody else says, well, how do I know your Jesus? We need you to know how to lead them to Jesus too. So if you made an honest assessment, right? If you had an honest answer, an honest answer, and you said, I really don't know Jesus the way I want to know him. Right? I want to know a little bit more about, raise your hand if you want to know a little bit more. I need to see him, y'all. Y'all stay, fellow. If you can do this. 
No, you pit. That's how you know. That's how you know your, your hand is high. I saw one of y'all said. I need to know this Jesus a little bit more. All right, put your hand down. And who knows them as their Lord and Savior? That means you've given your life to Jesus. I'm not going to even ask you to raise your hand in this moment. Because sometimes you can give your life to Jesus. And sometimes in the giving my life to Jesus, right, some things happen along the way. So you need to rededicate. That's what we call. You need to re-give your life back to Christ. So this Jesus I talked about today. When I said you need to draw closer to people that know how to pray, that know God, that love God. How many of y'all want to get a little closer to him? Raise your hand. All right. Now, remember we said you got to be willing to follow. Put your hand down. How many is willing to follow Christ? Raise your hand. And don't raise it because your friend is raising it. You willing to follow Christ? I see it a little bit. Raise it high like you can smell yourself. So listen to me. I want every eye closed. Would you raise your hand back there, babies? I need y'all to sit closer next time. That means the parents don't have to come and put you in the time. I need my mentors in here. I need my mentorships online, those mentees online, my mentors online. Because we're going to continue praying after this, and we're going to stay right here. I need my mentors and my mentees online. I need those who are in impossible situationships where you know you need a little bit more. You know you need to grow a little bit more. You know you're not in a place that you're actually growing. Hebrews, I believe it's 5 and 12, says by now you should be teaching. By now you should be able to do something more than what you've been doing like five years ago. You're still stuck in the same place and you're not able to teach nobody. God is saying, I'm trying to bring y'all to a good place. What's your name, young man? Tell me your name. Say it loud. Brandon. Come here, Brandon. I want you to come stand next to Brother Oak. Stand on right there. You're going to help us. You're going to help us tonight. As a help. Yeah. So for all of you who said, I want to know this Jesus, I'm going to have Pastor Obi come. True, you ready to know Jesus a little more? All of you who said that prayer, Pastor Obi, you say, I'm willing to follow. Raise your hand. All right, close your eyes in this moment. So right where we are, God, we thank you for the purpose and destiny upon all of our children in this room. But God, we thank you even more so right now, God, of what you're getting ready to do in their minds and in their hearts. We ask that you just show yourself mighty and strong. Reveal to them right where they are, God. They came to this service to get something. They came whether they was voluntold, God, or they wanted to be here. God, the fact of the matter is, is that they are here. And so we ask that you allow them to encounter you in your presence like never before in this moment. Let them not look at who they're here with. Let them forget that they're uh, but a child. Let them forget, oh God, who they came in here with, God. But let them begin to really hear what you're saying in this moment. For you say that he that had an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying, let him hear. And so we ask, God, that you open their ear gates even now to what your Spirit is saying against every negative voice of the enemy that is going contrary against your word, that is speaking contrary against your will for their lives, God, that's speaking contrary to the purpose and destiny in which you have for them, God. The OBGYNs, it shall be so, oh God. The professional athletes, it shall be so. Oh God, the cartoon voiceovers, God. God, they shall be so, God. You shall make manifest of every doctor, every lawyer, every physician in this room, God. And But you are the greatest doctor. You are the greatest physician. And so we say, God, prescribe to them your spirit. Prescribe to them, God, that they may not want for anything else in this life. All they want is you, Jesus, for they know and understand, even at a young age, that if they seek you first in your righteousness, all these other things will begin to be added unto them. And so we thank you, God, that you're increasing their seek in their life, God, right where they are, God, before they talk about social media, another TikTok, before they talk, oh God, about another basketball or football game, we thank you, Jesus, 
that they're willing to discuss the name of Jesus with their friends and they're willing to discuss the name of Jesus with their parents and their family. We thank you, God, that you are impressing upon their hearts, oh God, that they need a deeper relationship with you. So even now, God, even those that are still in their mind saying, God, I want to know about you even more so, Jesus. I want you to show me who you are. God, I don't want to live like this. I don't want to be like this no more. I don't want to struggle no more. I don't want to be broke another day. I don't want to end up like my mama. I don't want to end up like my daddy. But God, I need you to show me a better way. I need you to show me more, oh God. Oh God, so we even say now, God, empty out their storages, God. Empty out their hearts. God, empty out their minds, God. Oh, God, and they, they, they'll make themselves available, oh, God, to be used by you in this moment, God. And so we say, God, I am available. Come on, everybody that wants Jesus today, just safely say, I am available. Come on, say, I am available. Come on, say, I am available. Yes, I'm available to be used, God. I'm available for you to speak to me. I'm available for you to use me in whatever way you need to use me, God. My storage is empty, and I make myself available to you, God. It does not matter what I've been through. It does not matter what people have said about me. But if God be for me, there's more than the world against me. And I thank you, God, that you are allowing myself to be used, God. And so I say, here am I, oh God. Here am I. Oh God, to be used. Here am I, oh God, to be available, used by you, oh God. You get the glory out of my life. Come on, decree that over yourself. Say, God, you get the glory. Come on, say it out of your mouth. God, you get the glory. Come on, young people, say it out of your mouth. God, you get the glory. You get the glory out of my life. You get the glory out of every aspiration, God, every desire. That's it right there. Come on, out of everything in my life, I want you to be glorified. I want you to be lifted up. I want you to be magnified. I want you, God. I want you and only you, God. Don't let me go down by the wayside. Don't let me uh, continue to go down the path of unrighteousness. But God, we thank you, God, that you're snatching our young people into purpose, even now, God. So now let your word be a lamp into their feet and a light into their path. In the matchless and mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, God. Now listen, if there's anybody in this room right now that wants prayer, I want you to come to this altar. If you are ready to receive Jesus like never before, y'all don't look around. Just start moving toward me. Come on. My wife and I, we're going to pray with you. Come on. Come on. If, if you need something from God, if you don't like some stuff that's going on at home, some stuff that's going on at school, some stuff that's even going on in your mind when you're not around nobody and the enemy is still speaking to your mind and he's telling you to go and do stuff. He's making you and causing you to be disobedient and not to listen to your mind and your dad and not to do the right thing when ain't nobody looking. He's causing your integrity and your character to be faulty. He's causing you to be shady at times because the enemy is speaking in your ear and, 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 and you got all these friends that's peer pressuring you and they're, they're doing it and, and, and they, they're not getting in trouble and they're doing it and it seems like they're going to be all right. Uh, but God says that that's not the way I've made you. He said that you are a royal priesthood. You're going to be a holy nation. You're going to be peculiar. Come on, everybody say, he called me to be different. Come on, say it. He called me to be different. There's a reason why you always get caught. There's a reason why uh, the teacher always picks on you. There's a reason why well, you can't get away with nothing because he's caused you to be different. Come on. Come on. That's a reason why you don't fit in everybody's clique. That's it. That's a reason why you don't always fit in everybody's circle. Because God has called you different. Come on, somebody just say, I'm different. Yeah, you got to accept the difference in which God has given you. You got to accept the difference that your hair don't lay down like everybody else's. You got to accept the difference that your nose is just what it is. Hallelujah. But he created you in his image and in his likeness. He said that you're fearfully and wonderfully made. I want you to come to this altar right now. If you have an identity crisis, you're confused about who you are or, or, or where you're really from or whatever the case may be, I want you to come. Come let me pray with you. People picking on you and it make you feel some type of way. Come on. You, you ain't got to look around. You ain't going to be less cool. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah.
Brandon, you are a leader. You're called to lead. You're not called to be behind the scenes. You're a leader, not just for your generation, but God will use you if you're willing to say it's me. I, don't, I hear you like, well, everything ain't perfect in my world. Everything ain't how it should be in my world. Sometimes you don't even feel like you're worthy of what I'm telling you. And I'm not saying this to you because I want to embarrass you. I'm saying this to you because I see you as a leader. I watched how you moved in service today. I watched how you grabbed the attention. God made you that way for a reason. We're going to pray. Ready? Lift up your hands. When you lift up your hands, that's just a sign that I receive it. Let me see Mofo. Come on, Mofo. We're going to pray with you. For Brandon, right? So we pray for Brandon right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for the purpose over his life. I need everybody praying with me. We thank you for the purpose over his life, Father. I thank you, Lord, that he's going to be different. I thank you, Lord God, that you're going to do what's necessary on the inside of him. And everything, Lord God, that's working against him, Lord, everything that's not like you that's working against him, Father, things that are in his family bloodline, Lord, Things, oh God, that might rest, oh God, on the inside of him, Father. Things that he don't understand, Lord God. There's situations that he just don't get. God, I thank you for giving him understanding. Thank you for protecting him. And God, thank you for giving him good success. Thank you for prospering him. Thank you, Lord God, for giving him encouragement. God, encourage him. He don't have a lot of people in his world that's encouraging him and patting him on his back. Father, be the encouragement in his life that he needs. Give him understanding. Give him understanding. God, give him peace about his home. Give him peace about his life. Father, in every goal, every dream that he has, God, give him the faith to believe that you can do it. Uh, Brandon, all you got to say is that name. Say, in Jesus' name. If you say it, he going to come. Remember, say it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, I hear you that it's so. In Jesus' name, we just agree with Brandon right now. In the name of Jesus, I'm going to pray with you too. Come on, young man. We're going to pray with you too. We're going to pray with you too. we just going to agree with you. That you be the man of God that God is calling you to be. That you surrender your life. You surrender your world. Just as handsome as you want to be. God wants your world. He wants your your world. That means he wants your FaceTime, your phone time, your screen time, your game time. He wants that from you. So we're going to agree. You already know how this go, right? You got to lift up your hands. We already said the prayer. Brother Obi going to come pray with me. And if y'all just say, I'm too scared for all of that, then I'm going to come to you and I'm going to pray with you because we got time, y'all. We ain't done anything. So Father, we agree with him in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for covering him. Thank you, Lord God, for just like we pray for Brandon, we pray for him as well. Thank you that you're giving him understanding. Father, a lot of things he wants to just understand and know, God, I thank you for giving him understanding. Thank you, Lord God, that you're going to give him an understanding of his world. Thank you, Father, that you're tearing down high places in his world that seem unreachable, places that he seemed like he can't achieve. And thank you that you're blocking, oh God, the hand of the enemy. The things that he wants to do, God, that you're blocking and protecting him. Thank you that you're keeping him in the name of Jesus. You're covering him, oh God, that no weapon formed against him shall prosper. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you for every tear that's been prayed over his life. Thank you, Lord God, for every tear that's been shed over his life. And we thank you for the break that's coming in his world. Everybody say, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We're going to pray for Matt, Matt, too. Come on, Matt, let's pray. Come on, we're going to agree. Father, in the name of Jesus. You ready? Lift up your hands. We're going to pray. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for what's over her world. Thank you for her purpose. Thank you, Father, for her purpose. Thank you for her purpose. Thank you for her purpose. Thank you, Lord God, that her gift, oh God, to communicate well will be used for evangelism. Thank you for the evangelist on the inside of Madison, oh God. Thank you, Lord God, that she shall bring many souls to you, God. Thank you, Father, that understanding, education, oh God, understanding shall come easy, Father, over the next semester, oh God. I thank you for the desire that you're giving her in your word, oh God. Thank you for every soul that's connected to her purpose. 
Thank you, Lord God, that she's snatching, oh God, souls from the hand of the enemy. She shall walk, oh God, in kingdom assignment early. Thank you for every soul that she will win for your glory. Everybody say in Jesus' name. And we thank you for the power to do it. Thank you, Father, that you're giving her power to do it, oh God. Where she doesn't understand, Father, you're giving her understanding. Somebody say it with me. Say it again in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We thank you. Anybody want prayer? You want me to come where you are? Just raise your hand like this and I'll come where you are. It's okay. Come on. We got time to pray with you. Come on. We're going to agree. Ready? Put your hand up. And lift up your hands like this. When you lift up your hands, y'all, that just means I surrender. That means I just say yes. Sometimes it's difficult. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes you don't even understand. But when you surrender like this, that just says, yes, Lord. So, God, I thank you, Father, for her world. I thank you, Lord God, that she'll be the chain breaker. And that just means you're going to break the chains in your family. You're going to break. That means you're going to achieve things that nobody in your family has ever achieved. Thank you, Lord God, that she'll be the chain breaker, Lord God, of many things, oh God, in her world, in her bloodline. I thank you, Father, for the cares, oh God that you've allowed her to have the strength to carry on her own. But God, I thank you that she won't be burdened. She won't feel stressed by cares that don't belong to her. Come on, baby, close your eyes. And in this moment, hallelujah, I want you to tell the Lord, I give you everything I'm worried about. And I want you to think about it. I give you everything I'm worried about. And I have faith to believe that you can handle it. I felt that. That big old gas, that's you giving it to her. Thank you, Lord. I thank you that she won't be burdened. She won't wrestle, oh God, and be uh, overwhelmed with the cares of life. Yes, Lord, that's me. She won't be overwhelmed. Father, I thank you that you're bringing, oh God, rescue to her. You're rescuing her, oh God, from the places that she's saying help. So when your time, when you leave here, when I said you call on Jesus, and you're going to answer that, Jesus, help me. You're going to say, help me, Jesus. In the hard places, that's what you're going to call. You're going to say, help me, Jesus. And that's how you pray. You say, well, I don't really know how. You're going to say, help me, Jesus. And when you don't know what to pray, baby, you're going to say, help me, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Everybody, that's how we pray with each other. Say in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. For your word that says, cast my care upon you for you care for me. And that just means you can cast everything that's going on in your world on me because you care for me. else say pray for me anybody want to say I rededicate my life to the Lord is that you all right the baby's back there come on y'all you too come on you're able to do it I'm gonna agree with you you're gonna agree with me how old are you different now. Girl, listen to me. We're going to pray confidence. That you be confident in your difference. That nothing, nothing and nobody will try you. You not going to go. You not going to try to be like nobody else. You not going to look at nobody else and try to be a duplicate. The very difference in you what makes you different, you don't fit, don't try to fit. Be, stay different. The Bible says, I, I made you a, a peculiar people. You're a royal priesthood. Peculiar means different. Then he said, I fearfully and wonderfully made you. I mean, he took his time. 
And that's what you are. What's your name? Diana. So everybody say the name Diana. Father, we speak the confidence of God to Diana. She won't conform to this world. Diana will be the woman of God that you've called her to be. Diana will be different. Close your eyes, Diana. And just lift up your hands. And when you lift them up, that's your willingness to be different. That's your willingness to say yes to the Lord. You got a great purpose over you. You're a leader. And you're going to win souls for God, Diana. You're going to go places that people in your world around you ain't never been. But you got to be willing because the enemy sees you as a target. You're easy to spot among all the kids. Not because of your hair, but he sees your purpose. So, Father, she won't dibble and dabble in things that she should not. Her hands, oh God, will be sold out for you, Father. Yes, God. Yes, Lord. And you're going to give her the desire for you, Father. Give her desire for the word. Give her her desire for truth. Give her her desire to come after you. Father, I thank you, Lord God, that Diana is opening up her heart. Say, Lord, I receive you as my Lord, as my Savior. Come into my heart. Forgive me for everything I've ever done. In Jesus' name. All it takes. And then you just say thank you. That's it. When you say, that's it. Say thank you, Lord. That's it. That's it, Diana. You got a great purpose. You're gonna be some great mentors. You don't need no little ratchet mentor, the people that don't know nothing. You got a great purpose. You got that uh, Michelle Obama type of purpose. change the world because of Jesus Christ. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Y'all say in Jesus name. You pray for them. Everybody say in Jesus name. You dedicate your life back to Christ. She said, oh yes. <laughs> Let's hear it. Okay. It's all right. So we're going to pray together. You ready? She says she's a little afraid to be afraid of all the people. So who here knows Jesus Christ and you saved? Great. Then Diana and, and Grace come stand next to her. Come stand next to them. Because that's what we believe in kingdom concept. You stand behind her. Now you got people standing with you. You ain't got to feel like nothing. You ain't got to feel no type of way because they standing with you. Kingdom concept is we rock together. Everybody say we rock together. We rock together. So if you want to receive Jesus Christ, we're going to all rock together. Brother Obi going to repeat the prayer, and everybody going to rededicate. That means you ain't on the spot, but you're going to have to confess with your own mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, and you shall be saved. And he's going to go ahead. So, God, we thank you for life. We thank you for our own lives, God. But we know that our lives are not our own. So we say, God, thank you for this moment. Come on, everybody. Thank you for this moment that I can say, forgive me for everything that I've done that was not in your will for my life. My life is not mine. I give it back to you. So now, come on, say it with some power. Now. Come on, y'all young people. Say it like you're at the football game now. That's it. Now, God, I need you. Come on, I need you to come into my heart. Take over my life. I believe that you died and you rose and you're soon to come again. Until you come back, send me your spirit. Fill me, Jesus. From the top of my head to the bottom of my feet, feel me, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We thank you. We honor you. We praise you for salvation today. Salvation now in Jesus' name. Everybody say thank God, amen, and amen.
Listen, we honor the Lord for each and every one of you. Y'all give uh, uh, First Lady Obi a hand clap of praise. Come on, y'all y'all clap it up for her. She did a wonderful job in the message today. We thank you for those of you that chimed in online. Thank you for all of you all that came here in the building. Uh, we, we thank God for y'all coming and just being in worship with us. Y'all, we are packed today. We are at capacity, and I love it because I want everybody to be so uncomfortable here that we have to get out of here sooner than later. So I honor the Lord for each of you coming. Listen, we're at the part of the service where everybody can participate. Uh, we are going to take up an offering. Amen. And you just give your very best as unto the Lord. Listen, me personally, is Youth Sunday, and I invest a lot into our youth department. Let me tell you, we have skating. Come on, everybody say skating. Skate party. Come on, everybody say skate party. Free of charge. It don't cost you nothing. Kingdom Community Church has already booked and rented out Skate World of Troy for April 2nd, 2022. And we're going to be skating from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. And guess what? That's going to be our church service that day. We're going to skate. So April 2nd, 2022, we're going skating. So what am I saying? I'm saying we invest in our young people. We invest in our youth. We invest in our young adults. And we need each of you to help us fulfill that a uh, 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 need for us to have things active and ready for our young people. So those of you that can, uh, join us with the very best seat that you can get. Brother Obi is going to start this offering off with $50 himself. I need at least about 15 of you to sow a $50 seat. And guess what, y'all? It's almost the first of the month. Y'all know what come. Rent due, mortgage due, all the light bills, and the kids too. Hallelujah, Jesus. So we got to do something uh, come the top of the month. Uh, 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 and we got to take care of some bills. Hallelujah. So we need everybody on board. If this is your week to tithe, go ahead and tithe. If you have cash, amen, we have a receptacle here. Come here, bro Brother Rail. Come on, man. This is my junior armor bear. Hallelujah. Hold, hold, hold it up, both hands. Come on, because that's, that's, that's sacred. I know it's small, but the Lord is going to bless. He's going to increase what's in that box. Hallelujah. If you have cash, you can bring cash on up here. If you want a Soviet cash app, the giving prompts are on the screen. Dollar sign. K-C-C-D-E-T. You can sow via Zelle at 405-204-7246. You can sow via PayPal at K-C-C-D-E-T at gmail.com. And you can also sow via Venmo at K-C-C-D-E-T. Listen, we're doing a great work over here. We're not a large bunch, but the people that we got, we work, y'all, I'm telling you. Why? Because he gives seed to the sower, and we are going to sow our seed. We're going to meet the needs of the people and be the kingdom in the community. That's our endeavor. That's our mission. Y'all ain't got to wait on me. Y'all can come and drop whatever you got right there in the bucket. Amen. If you're online, make sure that you sow online. And then if you sowing online, I want y'all to type it in the comments and just say, done. I've already sold. That's a little song that we sing called, I've Got a Seed That I'm Ready to Sow. Y'all come on and lift it up. I've got a seed and I'm ready to sow. I've got a seed and you're ready to sow. Everybody say with me, he gives seed to the sower. Invite your friends April 2nd. Brother Obi said it, invite your friends. We rented out the entire skating rink. It's already paid for. All you got to do is bring your friends. That's it. Absolutely free. And if y'all say we ain't got a lot of friends, then tell your associates, hey, come skate with me for free. April 2nd, absolutely free. All ages, young, young adults. Let's say you got a birthday party in April. Bring your balloons, bring your party. You can throw it for absolutely, everybody say free. There's areas over there where you can have your own party, your own event. Kingdom Community Church will sponsor your birthday party. No, Akina. You can't have your party? <laughs> yes, you can. You can invite your girls. You can invite your girls. If you want to invite your boys and say, this is my birthday party, 
You can pass out invitations. Whatever you like to do, we want to be a blessing to you guys so that you understand this is what the kingdom is about, okay? Invite your friends, invite your loved ones, and make sure you come out to our next service on next Saturday. We Saturday Night Live, y'all, every Saturday at 5. Say Saturday Night Live every Saturday at 5. Listen, that's our service, y'all. Give it up one more time for First Lady Obi for a job well done. Now, this is what I'm going to do. Now, I said we're giving away cash prizes. Who came with who today? How many people you invite? Well, how many people you invite, Real? If you came with Real, stand up. Come on, if you came with Real, stand up. You don't, you don't count, Auntie Cindy. No, you grown. And, and you done been here before, but deep. Okay, so four. All right. Uh, how many y'all brought? Okay. You ain't invite nobody, I know. Hey, Amen. That's all right. Did you invite somebody? No? I see the parts family in here. We three deep back there. Three for the kids. You don't count, Mike. <laughs> Kendra, you, you, you don't count. You, I ain't going to say you old, but you, you grown. Maddie, how many you invite? None? Okay, it's just you. So, real, I, 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 guess, I guess I got to give you a, another cash app. He done won himself $50 just for inviting folks to church. You see how easy that is? All you got to do is, is, is invite your friends. That's it. Just, just invite your friends. Yeah. Next, so, so next time y'all come to church on, on a youth service will be April 2nd, right? And that's the skate party. So you invite a whole lot of folk to that, I'm going to give away some money from that too. All right? Um, let me get another one. Who can tell me uh, what was today's message about? Come on. Come here. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Tell, tell, tell me what you got. I'm, I'm trying to be a blessing to you. What, what did you learn today? I learned about Wednesday and Wednesday and what it means to share your own story. Okay. Who was the mentor in today's message? Elijah. Girl, you go on, sit down with your bad self. I need your cash app too. I'm, I'm going to give you 25. Yes, indeed. Uh, anybody else know something about today? You was listening enough? Come here. Come on. I'm, I'm, I'm going to see how well you was listening. Okay. So Elijah was a mentee. Uh, I don't know if she touched on it, but I'm going to ask you this anyway because you ought to know this. Um, how much more did the mentee do than the mentor? Well, a lot. Two times more. Two times more. Two times represents a double. Say he did double. He did double. All right, yeah. I got you on a $25 cash app, too. All right. Anybody else learn something today? That's all right, because y'all going to learn with Pastor Obi. I ain't going to wait on y'all day, but closed mouths don't get fed. But I promise you, I will bless you. If I tell you I'm going to give you some money, I'm going to give you some money too. Okay? So listen, everybody say Thursday. All you kids especially say Thursday. I'm going to be on Bible study. Everybody say it. I'm going to be on Bible study. Now you in church, I don't want you to tell no lie. Let me tell you why you're going to be in Bible study. Because everybody in this room right now, one, I want y'all to get to know each other, right? Nine times out of ten, we all probably be going to church together. Two, Bible study ain't like the adult Bible study. Like, y'all do totally different stuff. Just last night, everybody came over to my house. We fed everybody. We played Uno. We kicked it tough to about, what, about 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night? We want all of y'all to be able to come, right? And so, you know, y'all got to... Definitely stay in touch, stay in tune so when we do stuff like this, y'all can come pull up. Even, you know, y'all stay all the way out there in the wilderness, old deep west and all of that stuff. We'll make way for y'all to get over here to the east side. Amen. We love y'all. 
We thank y'all for coming to church today. Thank you, parents, for bringing the children to church. All your parents, salute to you. Uh, but definitely Thursday nights, we're going to be on Bible study literally for one hour. It's virtual. You don't have to go anywhere. You can be in your bed just sitting there with the camera on with your little background filters and stuff, whatever the case is. But make sure that you chime in on Bible study every Thursday. What day of the week? Okay. All right. I need y'all to chime in. And if y'all mamas forget and your daddies forget, y'all y'all let Pastor Obi know. Y'all can text me anytime, 405-204-7246. I promise you, I'm going to get on their head. Hey, y'all make sure them kids get on there. Make sure them kids get to church. But I thank y'all for coming. Thank y'all for hanging out. We are being intentional because we have a diversity group over here. We are being intentional. The reason why we're being intentional with our young people and spending time with them because we believe that y'all got next. So we're intentionally pouring into you. We're intentionally spending one-on-one -on -one time with you. We're intentionally being intentional about you. And so these times that we have, it's not so we can get closer to you, so you can do something for us. We are intentionally spending time with you so you will be the disciples that you're called to be, all right? And we're intentional in where we pour. <laughs> so we're asking you guys, if you'd like to connect with Kingdom Community Church, if you guys would like to become members, because we forget to do this, Brother Obi forget to do it every time. If you'd like to be a member of Kingdom Community Church, please make sure you see, raise our, raise our hand, our admin is right there. She's holding BJ right now. That's our church administrator. <laughs> She's raising her hand. Raise your hand. Follow, girl. Raise your hand. She's the church administrator. If you'd like to be a member of Kingdom Community Church, please make sure you see her so that we know that you can commit. And uh, we're pouring. Y'all, we're going to keep pouring. That's right. So make sure y'all are uh, getting ready for next weekend. Always register. I'm going to send the link out. I always post it on social media. But make sure you register for a church. We start on time. Everybody say on time. We long, never. We strong all the time. I promise you. We're going to be out by 630 every week. So every youth service is going to be lit. This coming up month in March, it won't be one in the month of March because we're going to start the month of April off with the skate party. That's going to be our youth service. And we're going to do some real small, maybe 10 minutes. But the rest of the time, we eating, drinking, and skating. All right? So we love y'all. Uh, thanks for those that was watching online. If they're still on, well, God bless you. Uh, peace and hope y'all chime in with us Monday morning for corporate prayer. We pray every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 7 a.m. to roughly about 7.30, 7.45, and that is it. Uh, but those of you that can, make sure you join us for corporate prayer, which is virtual. Join us on Thursdays for Bible study, 8 p.m., which is virtual. And then join us every Saturday night right here on Kingdom Community Church Facebook page, Saturday Night Live. Y'all go with the grace of God. Everybody, we standing. We getting ready to be dismissed. We got some goods in the kitchen, and you'll follow the directions of...